The natives have engraved on the face of this rock the figures of animals, etc., near which I marked my name and the day of the month and year. This morning, we're going to walk up Pompey's Pillar National Monument, talk about a little bit about the history of the site. Uh, why is this place so important to the history, not only of the United States, but also to the history of Yellowstone County, Montana, as well as the West in general? So as we ascend Pompey's Pillar, what I often tell folks, students that come here, is uh, I want people to think about what it was like 200 years ago. Uh, think about this, Clark and his party are heading down the Yellowstone River, um, hoping and planning to meet up with Lewis. And as they coming down the river, uh, they're having to stop at various intervals. And you might ask, well, what are they stopping for? They're stopping to hunt, to gather food. They're stopping because of the immense herds of buffalo that are crossing the river. And when I talk immense, I'm talking about herds of buffalo so large that there would be times they would have to stop for four, even six hours to wait for the buffaloes to cross the river before they could continue on. And the other reasons that they would stop is simply, I think, partly just curiosity and the, uh, the natural intent of an explorer, which is to look at the land and see the land. So as we think about all those things, and as we tell the story today, Clark is coming down the Yellowstone, and that morning they had gotten up, they had hunted, they had seen immense herds of buffalo, and he decides to get off the river and walk for a while and sees this, uh, this large sandstone outcrop here. And I think it's just naturally part of, of, of human interest to wanna to come to something large, climb up on top of it and look around. And that's exactly what he did. As part of an explorer, as somebody who was looking to traverse the West, to create maps, to learn about things that uh, have our, the landscape, the natural history, etc., He comes and he ascends the pillar, goes up on top, looks around, triangulates his position, comes back, and on his way down, he leaves his mark. Uh, right over here, his signature, thus leaving behind the only remaining on-site physical evidence of the entire Lewis and Clark expedition. This signature represents not just the visit of Clark, but I think of it as signifying a start of something, but a legacy that had actually in some ways been here before him. Clark's signature in July 25th, 1806, and then subsequently written about and chronicled in his journals, led a lot of folks who then traveled across the West to come to this rock, mark their names, as well as drawings, inscriptions, uh, all kinds of things all over the rock. And as you look from his signature uh, directly to the left, you can see all of these different signatures and marks and names, and they cover the entire rock. So throughout, all along Pompey's Pillar, all around it are these signatures, hundreds of them. Starting off with explorers and fur trappers at the t not long after Clark visited, and then going into the time of the homesteaders and the wagon trains, traveling up to the modern era, folks that uh, tilled the land for agriculture after the turn of the century. And I'm sure that if we looked hard enough, we would probably find some local high school class's name on here from the 60s and 70s. Pompey's Pillar tells a story, and that story starts some ways with Clark, but it continues on today with this legacy of all these people that have passed by. And so each time a visitor comes here, given they can no longer scrawl their names or write on the rock, they leave that legacy too. But as I mentioned before, that legacy kind of started before Clark. And so if you look over here at the rock, you can see where there are some markings on the rock and sort of a reddish hue. Those are actually Native American pictographs and petroglyphs. This site was culturally significant to the Native Americans of the area. And when we get on top, I'll explain a little bit about why there was such a significance to the site, both culturally, as well as given the great and immense hunting that was available to the Native Americans that lived and used the area. This rock I ascended, and from its top had a most extensive view in every direction. After satisfying myself sufficiently in this delightful prospect of the extensive country around, and the immense herds of buffalo, elk, and wolves in which it abounded, I descended and proceeded on. We are standing on the top of Pompey's Pillar National Monument. 
What is so remarkable and amazing about this site is that we are able to tell a story that is over 200 years by standing in one spot. What is also remarkable is being able to stand here and see these landmarks and the landscape for what it was 200 years ago, but also for what it is today. The first thing is the animals. When Clark was here 200 years ago, this landscape was covered with buffalo, elk, antelope, all kinds of different species would have been here. And with them, the same predators that we've read about many times, coyote, mountain lion, and of course, the wolf. But you would ask, why were all those animals here? And they're certainly not here today. As you look at the rims and this cliff formation behind me, you see this natural break. This was a funnel. These rims run all the way to Billings and quite a distance to the east. So here we have a natural break where these herds of buffalo, elk, and other animals would have been able to funnel down to the river, cross, and feed in this area. Thus, when we talk back about the Native Americans and their use of the site, the idea that they had this large platform to stand upon and use both for cultural ceremonies, but also for hunting is immense. If you think about the number of animals that would have been in this area on a regular basis. So as we think about that, and we think about the changes because for us, the buffalo herds are not really here anymore. There are still some elk seen. The, the bighorn uh, sheep that were seen by Clark on the cliffs are no longer here. We still have a few mountain lions hanging out in the area. And of course, coyotes uh, wander around every once in a while. But the landmarks are still here. And from those landmarks start a story. And that story is of the West. So Pompey's Pillar is one of those places, one of those rare places that you can come and tell an entire story of our country's West from one place.